once again, my my viewer, uh, on our exploration on the gospel of the kingdom. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. We honor you. We thank you for the things you are opening to us. We thank you for the things you are unveiling to us. We submit ourselves to the tutelage of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you teach us your word. We ask that you guide us, the spirit of truth. We thank you, Father, for we are promised that when you come, you will guide us into all truth. We thank you, even as you breathe understanding upon us. Thank you, Father. Cause us to hear as the learned. Wake our ear morning by morning. We thank and we honor you. I thank you for the grace to stand to teach your word. I ask for inspiration. I ask for strength. I ask for utterance. I give you praise. I honor you. We thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Thank you once again. Uh, we've, in our fourth and second episode, uh, we gave a definition of the gospel of the kingdom. And here we are to do why it is important to understand the gospel of the kingdom. Now, it is not everyone that understands the gospel of the kingdom. Not everyone. Not everyone. And understanding is a key. Paul took time to pray for the Ephesian church. Since I heard of your faith, you are actually uh, writing uh, to them in Ephesians 1 15. Uh, since I heard of your faith, I cease not uh, to pray for you um, that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Then revelation in the knowledge of him, then the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know. Now, understanding is a key. Understanding is a key. Now, when we don't have understanding, the world won't be fruitful. Now, if you study the parable of Jesus Christ, now, uh, the first word he casted fell on the wayside. The second word fell on the uh, stony place. Then the third word fell on a, a thorny ground. Then the fourth word fell on a good ground. It fell on a good soil. Now, what is a good soil? The good soil is a, a good heart. A good heart. A good soil is the man who had it and had understanding. Now, what differentiated uh, the other three from the fourth one is understanding. So the others could not endure. They could not bring forth fruit because there was no understanding. Over the time we heard messages in churches, we don't understand them. We don't understand what it is communicating. And firstly, you can't understand when until you know what the word is saying. Now, because we have heard scripture, we have read scripture, we misinterpret it. And that is why the church got to where they are just today. Now that you're reading the scripture, that you're on, you know, you know, cramming the scripture does not mean that you understand the scripture. We had a man called um Nicodemus who came to Jesus by the night. I said to Jesus, no man can do this thing except God be with him. Uh, and Jesus <laughs> will actually say, it is not about the sign you are seeing. The sign you are seeing is a pointer to something that is not being seen. It's about the kingdom. This is a testimony of the kingdom. What you are seeing on surface proceeds from somewhere and they are pointing to somewhere. No man can, you know, you know, he said, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. He went for her to ask, how can this, he said, okay, except he's born of the spirit and waters, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He said, how can this thing be? Jesus said, are you a teacher in Israel? And you don't understand this thing. You're a teacher. You don't know these things. So you're supposed to know these things. He has crammed the scripture. He has memorized the scripture. Yet no understanding. So understanding is a key. We also have a case of the man on the road to Emmaus. 
And when Jesus, you know, met them, I was asking them what, you know, manner of conversation is it? Uh, like, are you the only one in, in, uh, in Israel who uh, don't understand this? And as they were talking, Jesus began to explain scripture, began to explain from, uh, from the law, from the prophet. He began to explain all these things not to be fulfilled. All these things not to fulfill. He explained everything to them. So these men have been studying the scripture over the years, but they lack understanding. So understanding is the key if we are to prosper in the things of the spirit. So when they finished, Jesus brought the bread and suddenly their eyes opened and they screamed, wow, it's like, wow. While he was talking with us, our heart was burning. Our heart was burning. I am, I am, I am passionate for understanding. I am passionate for understanding. Now, because if we don't have understanding, we can't understand what God is saying to us. We can't understand the program of God. We can't understand the agenda of God. So we can't be a church without understanding. And virtually the church that are run for years, they're a church of no understanding. They go to church, they shout, they, 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 they're being carried away emotionally, but they cannot intelligently, spiritually, intelligently handle the scripture and understand what God is, is saying. That's why they are, they are, you know, you know, you know, we draw close to him. We, we, we draw close to him, but our heart is not there. Because when the heart is not understanding, they cannot engage, you know, you know, in, in, in serious engagement. So understanding is a key. So what I'm saying that there's a vital, you know, necessity, necessity why we must understand the gospel of the kingdom. Because the gospel of the kingdom is meant to understand is meant to understand, especially the disciples, especially the disciples of Jesus Christ. So if you are a disciple of Jesus, you must understand the message. Now, because the message is to you. So Jesus will talk to the multitude in, in, uh, in parables and the, and the uh, disciples come say, why do you speak to them? He says, so that they will hear and they will not understand. And I don't want you to be in the category of those who hear, but they don't understand. So that's why, you see, uh, for you to understand, your heart must journey. There must be thirsty. You, 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 you must be hungry for the word. Jesus said, blessed are they that do hunger. Ah, for they shall be filled. Praise God. So you must understand the gospel of the kingdom. Like I said, it is very uh, necessary that we understand the message of the kingdom accurately. Very, very accurate. Very, very accurate. Very, very accurate. You know, in the message translation, of that John chapter, you know, chapter 3, uh, Jesus said to the, uh, uh, you know, except one is born from above, it is impossible to see. It is impossible to see what I am pointing to. In other words, it is impossible to understand what I'm saying. So, so you have to see to understand it. Your, your, your mind, your heart have to capture it. It is going to bring forth understanding. Praise God. So, like we say, it's very necessary that we understand accurately. Uh, if we really desire to understand the gospel of the kingdom, we must be willing to unlearn and be patient enough to learn the true message of the kingdom. Now, because all that we have been running with for these 2,000 years, they are the doctrines of the apostate church. And these doctrines has created alien apostate values to us and we are holding on to these values and these values has nothing to do with the gospel of the kingdom it has nothing to do with the kingdom of god rather they, they diverted our gaze and our attention from what jesus is communicating understanding is a key very very key so we need patience so patience is fundamental in understanding the gospel of the kingdom you see, the effect of the dark age was so enormous upon the church because in that, 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 that period was when certain things crept in, when doctrines that are not of Christ crept in into the church. Doctrine of flying away to heaven that have diverted and caused havoc and these things have become the cardinal, cardinal doctrines in the apostate church. A doctrine that was invented by by John John Nelson Daly in 1830. Before that, 
No record of something, you know, flying to heaven in church. There was no record of that. Tracing the, 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 from the, 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 uh, the Apostles' Creed, Nissan Creed, all the, all the, all the, all the councils, we found nothing, you know, like that. You know, some of these things crept in as a result of that, they cast shadow on the gospel of the kingdom. And people hear the gospel so they have another understanding. So it's very vital that we understand, uh, you, know, you know, the gospel of the kingdom. The effect of the dark age upon the church was enormous. So the ancient landmark led by the apostolic fathers were turned upside down and the church could no longer decipher the original apostolic doctrine. The church could no longer decipher. Nobody can trace it. But we thank God for the grace that God is pouring upon the church and bringing understanding back to church now. Not because, you see, God is winding up this age. And he said that before the age wind up, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Then the end will come. So sons of God must emerge and run with the message. This message is a trumpet that is sounding. This is a trumpet that will translate sons of God to full divinity. Now, I want us to uh, take some key note why it's important for us to understand the gospel of the kingdom. Number one, when we understand the gospel of the kingdom, it will help us to understand the concept of the kingdom of God accurately. Now, because the doctrine of the hallowed church has cast a shadow on the pure gospel of Christ. Now, I want to, you see, <laughs> you see, most of the scripture, most of the eschatology and the end of the eighth program we have, we are given to us by the apostate church. As a result, we don't know how the kingdom of God will come upon the earth. And some are saying that there will be paid tribulation rapture. Some are saying there's going to be rapture, this and that. Is that how the kingdom of God is going to come? With this, with this, with this, with this uh, garages, we can't understand it. We can't understand how God wants to bring his kingdom and establish the eternal reign of righteousness upon the earth. So we must understand the sayings of the prophet, like I said in the first edition of the gospel of the kingdom, that the Bible is the book of the kingdom. The Bible is the book of the kingdom. So when we follow the scripture, we will see the pattern in which God is going to establish his kingdom here on earth. Now it is fundamental that you know that God is going to establish his kingdom here on earth, it is not in heaven because man, man was not designed to live in heaven. If God designed man to live in heaven, God had created Adam and put him on heaven. When God created the fishes, God did not put fish on ground. No. When God created the bird, the flying bird, he didn't you know, put them inside ground. Not at all. Not at all. So when God created fish, he made a natural habitat for the fish. When God created the base of the, of the air, it was called the base of the air. So their best is on air. The best of man is on earth, not in heaven. If you put man in heaven, he'll be completely irrelevant because he is here on divine assignment. But apostate church of champion over the year, eternal, resident and flying to heaven. We must come to the understanding that God put man here to manage the earth to administer God upon the earth, to rule, to subdue the earth, to bring forth life of God. So there is a eternal purpose of God, which God planted man here. God didn't create Adam and put him in heaven. Neither did Adam fail from heaven. So Adam fell from dominion. So it is also very important that we focus on the restoration and knowing the path and the procedure through which man will be restored to the earth. Now because we have loved the concept, we do not understand the concept of the gospel of the kingdom. We don't know an inch of how man will be restored upon the earth. We don't know how the earth is to be restored and how man is to be restored and how the earth is to be recovered by man again. That's why we must understand and follow the patterns of the gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. Now, number two, to have accurate understanding of what to have accurate understanding of what God is saying to us and what he expects from us. <laughs> it is understanding the gospel of the kingdom that we know what God is saying and what he's expecting from us. For without understanding the gospel of the kingdom, 
We cannot understand what God is saying to us and what he expects from us. Now, for over the year, Christians have been saying to us, praise God, Christians have been thinking that what God is saying and expecting is for them to come and live in heaven forever when they die. Thereby, they miss the message and God's expectation. So God expects us to come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and become the visible expression of all that he is on earth. That's what God is expecting from us. It is only gospel of the kingdom that gives you this idea, this concept, this understanding of what God is expecting, you know, you know, you know, from, 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 from man. To have a man in the measure who will be expression of all that is on earth and to make known to all principalities and powers in the heavenly places the infinite and multidimensional wisdom of God. In other words, God placed man here to be the revelation of, of himself. I want you to understand, not even Satan can give you a full description of who God is. No angel, no archangel, no cherub can give you a full description. So when we focus on going to live in heaven, flying away, escaping, you know, you know, and all those jargon that are, that, or, or, that, that are brought into the faith. So we can't focus. That's why up to now we have not seen people pursuing the statue of the fullness of Christ. We are not seeing that. Rather, they have they, they brought the gospel of fear and impulse in us. So people are, are, are having this escape mentality, not occupying here for dominion mentality. Without knowing that, 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 that the controversy and the, and, the, and the battle that have been going on have been the earth, the ownership of the earth. Now because God created uh, a heaven and earth and gave man dominion over the earth and said, you know, you know man, be in charge. But Satan deceived man and took the earth. And since then, Satan, you know, you know, have been working on the mind of man to forget about his inheritance from God. So pathetic. He created doctrines and teaching. I, I am absolutely sure that Satan is, is glad by some of these doctrines that have caused the church to lose focus and not working in the dominion that God has, you know, uh, placed them. Number three reason why it is important for us to understand the gospel of the kingdom, praise God. Understanding the gospel of the kingdom will bring us to the full comprehension of the syllabus of the kingdom and the program of God. Now, it will also help us to know how the kingdom of God will be forming us. How the kingdom of God will be... You see, when we understand the syllabus of God, we focus on it. We can be, you know, studying haphazardly. We can be believing things that are not part of the curriculum. We have added so many things that has no bearing towards the kingdom. So we must understand the syllabus of the kingdom. We must understand it. How the kingdom of God will form in us and how God will fully establish his eternal reign of righteousness and endless life upon creation. We must understand this. And it is so unfortunate because we do not know it, we are not you know, embarking on journey towards the syllabus. We don't even know the syllabus. The church don't even know the syllabus. When Paul was, 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 was crying, his heart was, you know, a body, his people, his people, they don't know these things. The oracles given to their fathers. The oracle given to their father, the adoption, the glory, the giving of the law, the covenant, the covenant, the service of God, and the promises. So Israel has a syllabus. They are pursuing. They, this thing formed the hope of Israel, which Apostle Paul was talking about the hope of Israel. The hope of Israel. The hope in which the twelve tribe of Israel serve God day and night. So what is the hope of the church? What is the syllabus of the church? Now because we don't understand the syllabus, so we lose focus, no attention on that. But we can try the syllabus and the curriculum of the gospel and then know 
how the kingdom of God is to be established and formed in us. You see, I always say this to establish that the Bible is the book of the kingdom. The, what, what we call the Old and the New Testament, they are the book of the kingdom. And some of us don't pay attention to, you know, to them because they told them that it is no longer relevant. Now, I want to say this for your understanding. Now, when Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, they are profitable for doctrine. Number one, purpose of the Bible. They are profitable for doctrine. Now, it is in these doctrines of God that will understand the eternal program of God. The agenda. So God unfold his agenda, his purpose in his doctrines. That's why the Tommy chapter 32 verse. You see, his your, your doctrine shall drop like rain upon the tender grass upon men. Your doctrine will drop. So the very first assignment, all scriptures given by the inspiration of God, it is profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For correction, instructions in righteousness, that the man of God will be perfect, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. So what mean the scripture is a manual for our perfection and being equipped. But it will amaze you to know this, praise God, from the context. Now I know that you see Paul was talking has man all scripture. Now, but when Paul made that statement, when Paul wrote that to Timothy, when Paul wrote that to Timothy. Matthew have not been compiled. Mark was not compiled. Luke, John, Acts of Apostles, they have not been compiled. All the epistles of Paul, all the writings of Peter, John, they have not been compiled. So when Paul was saying that, Paul was, Paul was actually talking about Genesis to Malachi, that these books were given by the inspirations of God. They are profitable for doctrine. So we can find the complete doctrines of God in them. That's why the manual that Jesus used to teach was actually the law and the prophet. Jesus didn't teach with the pistols. Jesus didn't teach with the, the, the three synoptic gospel. He was teaching with the law and the prophet. In Luke chapter 4, he entered the temple and the, and the Bible said, and the, the scripture was given to him. As his custom was, he opened the book of Isaiah. He began to read that the script, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You know, now Jesus taught with the law and the prophet. Praise God. And all the you see, even Paul, what they were teaching with, they were teaching with the law and the prophet. So when he said that all scripture is given by the inspirations of God. So it is in the scripture we find the curriculum. It is in the scripture that we find the syllabus of the kingdom. So we can't do without the scripture. We can't do without the scripture. Praise God. Now, hallelujah. Now, I would want you to understand when you go to Acts of Apostle, you know, the uh, scripture said that when they had appointed Paul a day, in, uh, I think, uh, Acts of Apostle chapter 28. Acts of Apostle chapter 28, verse 23. When, 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 when they gather before Paul and uh, uh, they, okay, so when they had appointed him a day and many came to him at his lodging to whom he, uh, who expand and solemnly testify of the kingdom of God, persuading them Concerning Jesus from 